You ready for the smoke box, son? I, I, you keep saying that, man. I'm getting nervous. Like, I'll keep saying, yeah, but maybe I'm not, or, or you know, like, I can hear that. Like, hey, watch, watch. I'm afraid B may, like, switch up on me and pull out one of those cush joints that, you know, I'm not ready for. And then and that's when I look at you, Dom. Is there, like, a safety word? I could be like, Dom, I feel weird. <laughs> what's, your, what's your safety word? Uh, 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 a promo code. Your phones are all on silent, please. <laughs> oh, this is dumb. This is dumb. Dr. Great Dumb here. Uh, we're about to knock off the next season of the smoke box. And uh, you know, to set it off, my man, my bro ham, son do be do it. Thank you, thank you, dude. Love you. Welcome to another smoke box, new season, new reason. Alright, I'm Dr. Green Thumb here in the smoke box in the purple people leader and uh, joining us in the box we got the rolling champ um cool mo dro back there we got the concentrate king cali blaze in the building he provided this uh for i today and he's got one back there who's smoking the big boys and a special guest in the front seat with the doctor is uh my longtime homeboy my little brother um, Sun Doobie, the illustrious one of the Funk Doobies. Ah, what's up, y'all? I love you, man. Fuck, be always with the right. Yeah, I love you, man. Just thank you, guys. Kelly Blaze, yes, all you guys, just thank you, man. And, uh, yeah, man, just a uh, big shout out to everybody out there, all my, the hip hop nation, all the true heads, you know? Word up. Uh, you know, like for years when we started this, um, Thank you for having me, B. Once again, for, man, dream come true. For years when we started this platform, people were like, where's Sun Doobie? It was like, you remember when we were kids and you, Kilroy was here and all that, you yeah, know, like you seen all this on the wall. Yeah, like and you're exactly photos. right, yeah. Uh, you know, we were getting hit up in our comment walls, like, where's Doobie? Right. Which Doobie you be? Right, right, so, right, right. Um, it's good to it's good to have you here in the box finally. Thank you for having me, B. As always, man. Uh, like I said, I owe you everything, and just um, thank you for, for what you've done for me and my career, and thank you for um, Funk Dubious, Soul Assassins, and all the future ventures we stuff, and all the um, Gunslingers mixtapes, which was so much yeah, fun to do. Those were fun. Oh my gosh, I got to tell you, like like our history <laughs> between Sun TV for everybody watching out there, we go way the fuck back i mean you know we are obviously brothers in the soul assassin clip and all that stuff um but even before cypress hill and 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 uh, funk dubious were official groups you know we were all getting down together son was out of high school and uh he was getting down with our with our brothers brett bolden and uh sean bolden that uh big uh, shout out word up man two thirds two thirds of seven eight three which uh mugs was in this group Oh man, um, big shout out to my big brother Muggs as always, man. Just thank you, B. You, and Brett yeah. introduced us to you, right? It was yeah. Um, I, I met all you guys at Muggs's house, and um, you remember when Muggs was um, he was he was a uh, um, he was practicing for the DMC for the DMC Chicago. Yeah, right? yeah. and um, you know, man, me and you hit it off, so it was yeah. all good, and we just started writing, and then sin, and then um, you took me back to the hill. And you introduced me to everybody, and it was forget it, man. I I just started taking the bus out there and hanging with you, and um, you just put me onto another world. You turned the lights on for me. Just thank you, B, for that. Yeah. What's crazy is, like, like myself, you're a product of Los Angeles. You grew up here. You were born in New York. Right? I know. So I you know. Were raised. I was pretty raised much here. here, pretty much. Yeah. You went to Fairfax High with Ralph M. Oh my God! Big movies. shout out to Ralph M. Yeah, Fairfax was a school because. You know, for hip hop, it was either going to be Belmont, it was either going to be um, Hollywood High or Fairfax. So you, Fairfax was the last high school you could go to, go because the next one was Beverly Hills. Right. And and people, if you were if you were in the hip hop or you were a rapper, you didn't want to go to a high school that was either in the suburbs like Canoga Park, or or maybe um too Caucasian like maybe. Be I mean, I didn't care, but you know how the streets is. So yeah. you know we were just trying to do that and and um you know but Scott Kahn went to Beverly Hills High. My brother, um Alchemist, Alchemist. went to Beverly Hills. You know, and, and, and my karate teacher lived near Beverly Hills High. So, you know, Beverly Hills was, 
you know, I mean, it was right there between Fairfax and Beverly Hills. That was us, B, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. That's where I went to school. Yeah. Girl. And Lito, I went to um, school with Lito and my junior high school, Bancroft. Yeah. And we went to, and that's Holly. Another Salute junior. Salute to Lito. Man, <laughs> love that guy. We got to get him in here. Lito, right, B? You know, what love I, me. you know what I tripped out on, on how you evolved, though, as an MC? Like, when, when we first met, I could tell that you were very much influenced by Big Daddy Kane. Like the styles, the styles yeah. that you were flipping. Yeah, you got me. Weren't, weren't, they weren't necessarily. <laughs> you got me. They weren't necessarily Kane styles, but they were. You could tell they were highly uh, influenced by Kane. And I got to tell you, the the flip was so dope. Like like you had a pocket in there and, that I that I was mad That's impressed nice. by. No nah, hell Thank yeah, you, dude. Bro. Like Thank that. You, I, that I, means a lot. Man. I'll tell you what. That shit like. As a stylist, right, it it sort of helped me, like, actually, like, get better, too, because I was like, oh, shit, I hear what he's doing over there. And, uh, you know, I think stuff like that, when you're influenced by a certain rapper and you carry a similar style for a while, you get used to their pockets. And eventually, when you come into your own, you eventually take it to a different place, because I'll tell you what, when you eventually flip the style and 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 did your son like your son doobie style i'll say because no one else had it um you didn't sound like kane at all you couldn't tell you were influenced by kane at all you took the pockets that you learned and you told them flip them backwards and i love that shit i had to because i was so scared of you guys man you guys were so good and B, you just had this like flow that when you would flow, even though you had a lot of words, I could understand everything. Muggs was a stickler for that. Yeah. I'd I couldn't that. under, you know, and you could under, and the way he would make you kick it and you could understand, enunciate everything. You're, and you're one of the few that can understand the type of production methods that we oh, as my, meticulous. Went under, oh my yes. gosh, you were meticulous. And then um, you taught me how to um, uh, do the two the two track, um, one track like um, who knows the sun when you're coming on the peace mode, son. And then the next one be you better pass up the blaster because I ain't the soft one. Better get off the one. And when you taught me how to elevate my voice like that, not to sound like the last line, that's when I knew I had my style. Yeah. So it'd be one line up, one line down. Right. One line up, the roller coaster. one line down. So you know how we used to do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look. Right. I tell you that shit was pivotal to your style because, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. minute people heard you, they went ape shit to your shit, and like, you know, you actually became an MC where other motherfuckers were trying to snipe some of your style, like, or were influenced the way you were influenced by Big Daddy Kane style. Yeah. Motherfuckers were influenced by yours. Like, I'll tell you straight up. Like my man, you know, and much respect to to one of my other brothers, uh, Duke from the Psycho Realm. Before he flipped his style and came into his, yeah, he was very much it. he yeah. was very much influenced by your style. I it's a trip. That. Like when I heard the first Psycho Realm demos before I joined the group, a Duke sounded like a raspy version of Sun Doobie. Wow. And, and and it was wow. dope. It was dope. Like he had dope. he had your pockets like down. But then there was a time where he went and evolved and he flipped his style and he sounded nothing like you. But you could see where the pockets that he utilized and then flipped the style and made his own style out of it. Yeah. He did just like you did yeah. with the Big Daddy Kane shit. Were, you know? and, were. And, and and like I want you to recognize that because as an MC, when you when you fucking influence others to 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 do that, like first they sound similar to you, and then they flip the style to something of their own. You're a part of you're a part of that foundation, whether you know it or not. You Thank know you what I mean? mean? And, and uh, coming from you, that means a lot. And um, like I said, you 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 would um you would say some things too, man. And and um, but you know we was we was on the hill. I remember you, me, Mello, Sin, everybody, and we were just, um, I just remember Mello blew up, then we were happy for you because you blew up, then I see Everlast, and then it's us, and then I get nervous because I know that I have to, uh, a certain 
um, um, a certain style and a certain respect that goes along with with you guys is, and um, you know you're a, you're a hard act to follow. B. It just it, it no one. It, it's just that you know you're a DJ. You play the congas. You play guitar. You you do fucking I um, the vocals. Guitar. I wish I could. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you 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 Based do a lot. A you do a lot, man. I seen Good you, try. man. He, you're humble, and I, I love. I just love your spirit, <laughs> man. And um, you know, just thank you. And um, man, because of that style. I got to travel the world ten times over, and uh, thank you, B. Ten times over, and love that you received was crazy. I'll tell you what, one of the funnest tours that we ever had, like you know, this is thirty some odd years of touring, was the Soul Assassin <laughs> tour. That was one of the funnest tours ever because it's the whole click. It's like we took our whole block and went on tour, and and what was crazy <laughs> is like everybody's show was just popping, like. We, we were we were fortunate enough to have like the type of fans in in the soul assassin clique and to the individual groups Word. that showed up early for yeah. these shows so like alchemist and scott khan they were the hooligans at this point they were opening up and you know uh, the nervousness for them was like is anybody going to be there when we go on because they were going on early but to the credit of our fans back then, <laughs> I mean, the fucking venue was swelled, like sold out, swelled up, like ready for them. And the hooligans would go out there and they'd, and they'd kill the show in spite not having too much experience, just their energy. They, you know, they were a ball of energy. They'd come out and do their thing. And then I think Fatal would come out and do it. Yes, thing. remember Fatal, yeah, and, yes. And Fatal would rock them. And Diesel. Remember Diesel? And Diesel would rock up. Salute, salute to our bros. Yeah. And then eventually Doobie would come out. And then Doobie, like like your energy would take like what they did and just boom, lift it. Because this guy out of nowhere would peel off his shirt, you know, before most motherfuckers in hip-hop I don't do that no that. more, but just yeah. Peeling was... off his shirt, <laughs> yeah, yeah. walling out, jumping in the crowd, stirring it up. And then House of Pain had to follow that. And then the House of Pain would come with their crazy ass energy and they're jumping out in the crowd and Everlast, this is when he moved around a lot because he was maybe a buck 95 at that point. And, <laughs> and he, he was thinned out back then. Yeah. And then yeah. we'd have to follow that and come with our crazy ass energy. So like the funnest part though was when we would bring you guys back out, you would never last. And then the three of us would dive out yeah. and race to the back, back of the building. They pick us up like, like past us like we, joints. Yeah. We'd all jump out into the crowd like stage dive style. And see who and can make it to the... Yeah. Who could make it back and forth yeah. the, the quickest. Crowds and Doobie would back. always be in the lead. Because I weighed, because weighed he, the less. He weighed like a buck ten. They're trying to stick their <laughs> fingers <laughs> in my ass like this. I, I, hey, I would always end up winning because either Eric would fall in the crowd and, or this guy, he would get stalled out somewhere because he was getting molested by that. <laughs> it was B's show at the wish. end of the day. That's not <laughs> lie. It was B's show. And B, they'd, they'd like, you know, um, setting me up and, and fucking, you know, man, just seeing my cheat, reaction. I, I would cheat and start trying to roll back, you know what I mean? If they, weren't, if, they weren't, if they weren't carrying me quick enough, dog, I was rolling over, like, just roll me back up. That's some straight hip-hop shit, though, like, you guys did, uh... It's just straight delivery after delivery, just uh, like you said. Like fuck it was hard, shit. man. Was this thing. guy is always thinking of outside the box, so it was hard to keep up with. Me. So I would think, man, what do I do tonight to, to um, you know? So I had like I, I, I did this trick that B taught me. I, I saw a, a broom closet and I just went in there, and I just started re rehearsing my shit in my head in the broom closet, and then by the time I got out of the broom closet, I was ready. You know, yeah. you know what's crazy is that, like, I don't think there was another tour, not, another hip hop tour. Yeah, you told that, me a lot. That each wow. each group uh, played for a sold out crowd, and the crowd was nuts for everybody. That because that's hard. Usually, the two headliners or maybe the three top groups get all the love, and the other, the first opener and the second group, they, you know, it's usually not so great for them. You know what I mean? But on this shit. I mean, motherfuckers was wilding out. People were buying merch. I remember, man, we were wilding out from one hotel to another, one city to another. We were like, destroying. Muggs, Muggs was infamous for destroying my dressing room. Remember that? <laughs> you guys would just love to fuck with Sun. Yo, let's fuck with Sun. Let's fuck up his dressing room. Let's just look at his face when he sees it. Bro, I'd, I'd be like, I'd have these girls 
And I'd be like, yo, girl, come in my dressing room. Everything's all good. <laughs> when I go in, Muggs had flipped the cheese tray, the meat tray, the champagne. It Muggs to takes everything, flipped that, broke it on the mirror. Oh, yeah. And then I'd just be like, um, girls, let's get... <laughs> Let's just go to the bar. I'll get you. I got you. I just don't worry about it. But you said you had a dressing room. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, B Real's got his dressing room. I know. But <laughs> I'm not B Real. Let's just go to the bar. We're good. We're good. I'll introduce you to B later. Don't worry. You promise? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Man, oh, that's man. how it was, though, that's right? How it was. That was the, we were mad cap, bro. Mugs right away. We're son. We're son. Did he disappear? Fuck his shit up. But, and I'd be like, oh, no, guys, please. Uh, no. Oh yeah, man. There was oh some... man, so much fun, bro. But crazy times. Um, B, it was the best, man. I love you, man. Just thank you. Just um. So I, I think we got to do yeah. a, a, an anniversary Soul Assassin show, um, here in Cali at some point. Woo! Man, Woo! I think we got to do it. I think we got to. I'm, I'm calling out to all the Soul Assassins. Hearts are still beating. Are. Let's Woo! go. Hearts are still alive. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, let, let me ask you this. Well, for Wall Street, right? <laughs> let, let, let me let, let me ask you this. When you got hey. when you got shot back some years back, you got oh. you got shot in the buttocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were being resistant. Back in the days, for, for those who don't know, I got up, shot twenty years ago. For yeah. giving up your role, for not giving up your role, for not giving up my role. Um, you threw the Rolex on the roof, right, right. of a building. Right. You said, you ain't getting my shit. Fuck you. And you. That's because that's what they do in the movie. So I did what they do in the movie. I just threw it, man, right <laughs> on the roof. And they got pissed. They were pissed at me <laughs> once I threw that shit on the roof. They got pissed. They're like, oh, you know L.A. Yeah. Oh, do me. He outsmarted us again. So they and shot you in the <laughs> ass because were you, were you trying to take off or... Or how? Um, or, 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 no. or or they just no. They was on some. Tra they wanted to. They wanted to feel the goods. Oh. I was like, are these <laughs> niggas gay or some shit? Oh. And then I was just like, oh. And then I think what they wanted to do was because it was under the hip. They didn't want to catch the felony because right. I heard if it's under the, it was some pussy shit. But it was just weird, man, because. You know, man, at that time, L.A. was, it was just dark days. And oh, yeah. Everything was rain. It was raining. It's you... kind of like these days. Yeah. And the wolves out. You know, it's raining. And, and you know what? I got to, I got to say, rest in peace and rest in power to everybody, you know, who's, um, that we lost in L.A. Because I could have easily been that. But luckily for me, close, but no cigar. And uh, I'm just uh, thankful to the Lord. And just thankful to everybody and all your support. And and I really ha do believe it had a lot to do with you guys' energy and the energy of L.A. and the good people that I, I surround myself with. Just thank you so much. Yeah. When I remember going to see you in the hospital <laughs> the first time. With Everlast. I wake up. <laughs> Everlast and B are looking at me going like this. You motherfucker. <laughs> like, Doobie, you're crazy. Why did you just give it up? But I, did, I didn't care, man. I wasn't crazy. <laughs> did you go back and try to retrieve it or did they try no, to go No, I had insurance. B, stop. So some, some lucky motherfucker that fixed the roof of that Whoever building. fixed that roof, they got it. Or it, could, or it could still be up there. Did, you never went to the building and asked to, to for someone to go look, B, if, see if it was. Up I had there? money. I just, I just figured I'd go buy that, another one. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. If you knew where you threw it, I just threw. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's. Imagine if it's still there. You imagine if it's. No, I don't think it's still there because I, I, I would imagine so? whoever owns that building had to have checked the roof. By now. All I remember is Everlast was mad as hell at me because I bought that watch. Yeah. He said it was too early in my career to have a watch like that. And the next thing you know, Happy puts me on a plane to New York and I'm opening up for Big L and the DITC crew. Yeah. And I see Lord Finesse and Buckwild berating Big L just like you guys berated me when I bought that Rolex because Big L had bought this chain. And it had like a, a, you know what a cow skull in the yeah. desert looks like? Yeah, yeah. But it had diamonds on it. Ooh. And Big L comes up to me and he doesn't feel so bad because he saw my watch. <laughs> and he goes, hey, Doobie, right? Like, we don't listen to them. We do what we want to do. And I had the hair at that time because I was trying to channel Doobie you. Seagal, yeah. I was trying to emulate you and you had your fro. And we had our hair. And I had the bet going on with mugs of who can grow, our long grow the hair the longest. Who so, but, um, it was, um, I was, I think it was, it was a tie, right? It was a tie. Mugs won. And, and then, um, I kept the hair 
And then that was it. You know what I'm saying? But I had so much fun with you, B, man. And forget it, man. We were just going back and forth, New York and L.A. So, yeah, man, good shit. Dude. <laughs> That's crazy. They didn't crazy. get to watch. No, oh, it was crazy, man. man. It was bad. just it was just a weird time. And and like I said, it was so long ago. And, and like, um, that you know, man. That neighborhood gentrified the fuck out. Though. Now, it's, now if, we, if I showed you guys where it happened, you guys would be like, oh, doobie. This place is all gentrified. That yeah, was, yeah. That was by the 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 Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah. Over off of uh, what is it? Uh, well, Crane's Records was. Remember Crane's yeah, Records? Yeah. <coughs> Crane's Records was one of the few record stores that that sold the the um hip hop that the DJs wanted, and if they needed that record, it was like a music factory. That was the Crane's Records was the place you go to. Man, I miss that so much. Be, oh, right there off of Pico and La Brea. Yeah. Oh, there was a barber shop down there, right? Yeah, remember the barber shop? Yeah. yeah, that was cool, man. I mean, it was the shit, but I had to be careful because um a lot of e-rickets over there. That's a schoolyard in Mansfield. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what I mean. I mean, you got. I mean, I know what you mean. <laughs> the joint. I blame it on the joint. I respect. Yeah. I love everybody. No, I, mean... I respect everybody. I would be. I apologize. I love you guys. That's it. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. But I had fun, and um, yeah, forget it, man. I mean, I just remember um, uh, me and you just being over at Muggs's cutting the demos, and then um, us going to Paramount and doing everything at Paramount, and um, you know, that's that's where I learned how to sharpen my sword, and um, I, I saw a lot. Of, I took a lot. I learned a lot from you, B. Yeah. I, th I think we picked up a lot from each other you know all of us that that hung out you know we were all crafting our shit at that point and like bouncing inspiration off each other like that yeah that's that the, that's the way i see it because i mean you know we all got we all stepped up in our times but we all sort of like you know help guide each other through it now that was uh that's always key man you know if you if the team is going to be successful everybody is pivotal and and everybody's role is pivotal yeah and everyone helping to sharpen the other you know that's that's everything and and that's what we were doing at that point i mean like we had so much shit going on all together and the way we'd roll out to clubs that like was unprecedented oh remember I mean, guadalinda's you and me and guadalinda's just we, chilling with amanda sheer yeah. and fucking ika no, like just the, the the straight up way that we'd all squad up. Like we'd have like 20, 30 soul assassin oh. members from Funk Dubious to House deep. of Pain Mob, to Cypress. It was deep. Yeah, it was deep. Mobbing to every Mobbing to everything. Like, yeah, it, it was, was, it was crazy, a thick, thick squad. You was the nucleus. Yeah. You was the nucleus and I was just right next to you in mugs. That was it. That's all I could do because... I remember Sin picking up for me at my mom's house for three years straight just to get our music right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, man, you guys, um, like I said, man, um, so talented. And you taught me so much because we know the music business is just 10% um, talent and 90% business. And you also taught me the business side of that. And you were like, yo, son, don't do it like this, son. Do it like this. You get more money over here. If you go over here, you get more, you know, over here. Yeah. And man, you, that was priceless. And oh man, just thank you, B. I wouldn't have what I have, and and everything, and travel, and, and all the good stuff if it wasn't for you and Mugs. And just thank you, B. I love you. Thank you so much. What What was it like doing radio for that for the time you were doing? Oh, it? I forgot. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> I know what it was like I, for me. Dude, a you're lot, right. A lot of I, B, I forget. I forget, B. I, I've done a lot, man. I just keep because that that was an opportunity that doesn't come to too many rappers. Motherfucker, I remember you pulling up out of nowhere and you just coming up and I was like, yo, B, you came to see me to congratulate me and just thank you for and showed me the support. Man, B, you are the prince of men. Thank you so much. <laughs> you, man, were, you were just like, hey, I'm proud of you. And that was it. That's all you said to me. I, I wish you would have stayed longer, but you were, just came by and... And you just left me. You're like, all right, I, nigga. I had work. Yeah, I know. You, you were know like, all right, nigga, is. I got shit to do. And then you just left me. Well, you know what that... I love that, you, B. You Thank know, you for that. Uh, that's all love. You already know. But you know what was crazy about that is that that was like... We had the representation of Soul Assassins on both major urban stations at the time. 
with you being over there at Power and Bobo and I being over at, at 92.3. And the Soul Assassin's influence was just washing over LA. Yes, sir. At that point. Word. So, like, word, word, word. but like, it, it was interesting because I know that they were like, what was different for us than it was for you is that we were a mix show only on Friday nights. And so, you know, we could sort of be free to do whatever the fuck we were going to do because we were independent contractors, right? We're not signed up the way that Julio G was signed up. Like, you know, he's, he's, he works for the company. He's, you know, got a contract and he's there throughout the week doing, you know, the five day a week grind, right? Yeah. That's a different contract than they give mix shows, I right? Love Julio. So, so you had and you you had it. you were you were in the midst of having like a, the same similar contract or type of contract that Julio Yeah, they had. offered my contract the second month after eight weeks. They, I couldn't believe how fast. You know, like what the the type of contract you had. They want they were actually wanted to, you, to commit to you for like being a a, a, a host there. A DJ, a on air what, personality, right. five days a week. I was number one in the nation. In the nation. The second person who was under me was Russ Parr in DC. That's Washington, crazy. DC. Remember Russ Parr from yeah. and Lisa Canning from KDAY 1580 AM? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't Parr, make this shit right. up. I was working under Steve Smith from Hot 97. Yeah, that's Steve right. Steve Smith. Steve Remember? Smith. Yeah. My gosh, B, and B, you broke the ice for me big time because I wouldn't have got that job at Power if I didn't know you. They were just like, well, B's, B's over at the beat. It would be nice if we had Doobie over at KPWR, Emma's. And, and you, you know what it is, is they recognize that that your your personality, one, you're Latino, and that speaks to who they were, right. the demographic. Oh, was, yeah, I didn't of. think about it. And, and then, two, your personality, and three, you know, you, you came from a group that, it had some success based out of the west coast but right right Gee, basically global right right and, and you know hey it had it was fun the, man and we had so much fun. <laughs> did it get to be too much though because i mean you know as as a, as an artist you get to dictate your schedule most of the time you could say yes and no to to whatever the fuck right but under a contract like that you got to be there and you gotta be it's demanding. it's B, demanding. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a, I'm not a, my worth ethics are more for the studios because that's how Muggs trained me. Right. But when I was learned on radio, it teaches you that nine to five ethics. And I'm yeah. not used to that because you know me, B, I can only play that serious role for too long. And then my immaturity will take over because <laughs> ah, it overwhelms man. everything. That's honest. You know that's what I'm real. saying? B, I'm just being honest with you guys because that's what makes me me, son yeah. doobie. So, um, it's just that, you know, everything was cool. It's just that the girls and the girlfriends, um, you know, the girls coming out of the bathroom and, and just them popping up out of nowhere and just that messed with me because you didn't know that they stalked you or you didn't know if they followed you home and you'd be like, damn, how did you know where I live? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, I mean, I was always going to ask you, how did you, you know, back in the days, I, you had your problems too, I could imagine, you know, so, but I know now we're like settled and everything, but other than that, and then um, people wanted me to play their stuff all the time. Oh, I'd imagine and you they, got like calls from everybody. And the Yo, money, do me, do me they tried song. to pay me and I was like, no, nah, I don't do that, bro. Yeah. But I hear you, you know what I'm saying? Because you were one of the few people that taught me, you know, um, principle over the money and all that stuff like that because, and you were right, I kept my position longer because of that. Yeah, you know, not all money is good money, as they say. Dude, man, they were mad at me and then they would yeah. take me out to Roscoe's and give me money under the table to play their stuff. You, but I, you were I, I learning the it. other side of the game right there with that. Because that's the game that most artists don't know. Okay. Right? I, didn't, I was, I'm, I was like, young, you think about it. You think about it like this, right? Our, 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 our label reps right. had to go do those lunches with, right. with guys in your okay. position. Right. Hey, so what kind of love can you give me if I... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and you, were, you were seeing that firsthand how, because you taught how me how to be played. a disciple of hip-hop you were like we belong to a royal priesthood of hip-hop do we we don't you know we don't um if we don't um we can't be bargained with we can't be negotiated with soul assassins and you know we are we're top notch that's you know be insane in the membrane you know, rock superstar around. yeah you're yeah. b man you're pro man I, I can't say nothing so 
you know, all, when I heard you on the beat, all I could do on power is just study you and then also do the same delivery, enunciate my words clearly so everyone understands me and I don't sound like some, you know, idiot just on the microphone. Know the distance, always keep like a five finger distance from the mic um, if it's hot and um, go ahead, don't overthink it and just go ahead and do your thing. And your shit was funny. I mean, that, that, that's why- <laughs> I'm almost all right, bitch. No, 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 I was funny. trying to be like you. <laughs> no, you no, guys. no, you had your own shit going. Thank you, And, man, and thank that's, you. Why, that's why they were fucking with you because it's like, it was like, it was a brand of funny that they had never heard in Word. that in that time in that you, in that you, time man. slot. Thank you, man. And, and, I I th and I thought you were really good there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, right. So, like, as far as music, what are you working on right now? You working on oh, anything? right now I got Clash of the Titans. Right now, Seven Soprano versus Sun Doobie. Um, we got some joints on there. Boulevard Anthem, My Majesty, and Doobie's Revenge. All fire. Um, I liked um, Seven's production because it reminded me a lot about your production, Mugs of Soul Assassins, and it brings me back to that nostalgic hip hop back from 93, um, um, Error, 96, 97. So, um, yeah, man, um, it's on iTunes right now. You guys want to download and support it, man. You know, all we do is hip hop over here. <laughs> Um, I know there's this new generation. I know there's uh, new music also with these other cats out there. But um, I'm an OG with my other big brother OG and um, Clash of the Titans out there. Um, just want to give a big shout out to Adrian Salazar out there um, um, who pretty much r and beat the whole project. And also want to give a shout out to Thurston Howe. Big shout out to Afro and producer Domingo on Beats. You know who does who's done stuff for uh, on um, Blastmaster KRS One. So like I I said to you guys, uh, Sun Doobie, you know, um, Clash of the Titans, Seven Soprano versus Sun Doobie, um, go cop that. You know, iTunes, it. word up, and it's it's amazing. Oh, just wanted to just thank um everyone. Um, there's some Spanish singers on there. I don't know who she, her name is, but I just wanted to shout her out, man. She's amazing. So thank you guys. Enjoy the album. Word up. Thank word you. Up. You still got your porn collection, or is it all digital now? Man, what is it? Oh, you should have said something, Doobie. See, he got you. <laughs> well, it's all digital, it's, right? It's, it's, I, I, got a, I got it on MP3 file if you need anything. No, I, don't need, I don't need nothing. God, I just man, wanted to my know lady's you. probably watching. Oh, I'm sorry. Your you, you, The collection you used to have. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to have it. Because, you know... I was I was crazy, man, back in the day. Huh? Was Fort you know? King, yeah. Yeah, you know, but yeah, you know, my maturity took over. Yeah, uh, he's a grown You know, I mean, what now. are you gonna do, right? And uh, you know, my lady, man, we, you know, she, we, we like to get freaky sometimes. You know, she's kinky, but I'm not into the horses. <laughs> nah, I'm no not horses. into horses. No, 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 no horses. No beasties. Well, you know, we got when I was when I was in tour in Mexico, they invited us to a donkey show. Oh, you know on. what I'm saying, and TJ, right? Uh, yeah. But I just, all right, all right, shoot, okay, I just. You get that, Ty? All right. Yes, you yeah. said, yo, me and my girl are uh, kinky, I hear you. but I'm not into horses. Look at me. I'm sweating <laughs> over here. Bro, horses. Sorry. <laughs> hey, they're, they're, you know. <laughs> yeah, no horses, man. No horses. No horses. <laughs> Word up. This has been another smoke Whoa. box. I want to thank my man, Sun Doobie, for sitting in here with us. Um, old school style. Um, you could see him on the Dr. Green Thumb show with us um, now and then, you know what I'm saying? Because he's sitting at the table with us. And uh, make sure you check that out, man. And uh, again, I want to thank you for sitting in the seat thank you, and getting down it's with honor. us. It's an honor. Brotherhood to always, always, Soul yeah, Assassins. And uh, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, share this out, get down with my man, some son Doobie, and all his new projects that are coming out. And, uh, you know, stay smoking that good. Keeping a positive attitude for 20 Jordan, that means 2023. Um, you know, stay stay in the positive lane, keep love in the heart, no boof, no negativity, and uh, on to the next one. Right on. What's up, Kevin? Uh, you you can draw something, something and, or write something. Come here, good whatever. sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Choose. What up, y'all? This is Sun Doobie of Funk Dubious, and I just did the smoke box with yeah. B Rail. <laughs> Funk OBS Soul Assassins, baby. Got the heart of a lion, soul of a titan, mind of a genius. Fly with the heighten, all your senses is senseless, resistant, relentless. It's what they call you when your grind is endless. Let's get this. They say I'm psycho, I move weight like lipo. Got
a big crib like Michael. Out the window with a rifle. My wrist game on light show. I'm backstage with white hoes. I got pre rolls in that red cup. That's key line. Don't like those. Got a full pack and we move that. Too aggressive, better pull back. Weight heavy, gotta run ready. My game steady, but you knew that. I'm too on and my crew strong. 